Hello and welcome to our worship on Sunday the 4th of October, the 17th Sunday after Trinity. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team and it's good to be here with you and worship together with you even though we're apart. Got some lovely photos this week. Megs from Solway Ash sent this picture of the neighbours looking over the church. Uh, she snapped it on her way out of church a couple of weeks back so thank you Megs for that. And uh, last week was Harvest Festival in many of our churches and Hook were celebrating and there's some beautiful sunflowers from their harvest flower arrangements. But perhaps the most exciting event from last week was Fiona's ordination to the priesthood and here are some wonderful pictures of her looking so radiant after that ordination last weekend. It was very intimate, only 30 of us there, uh, quite a different feel to how it might have been normally but no less exciting and transforming. So well done Fiona and she's busy getting to grips with BCP and Common Worship Eucharist around the team. You might bump into her soon. Do send us your photos of what you've been doing this week. We always love to share them. So let us gather together to prepare to worship God using our Creation Tide liturgy for the final time before celebrating with our online Harvest Festival next week. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our hymn accompanied by the musicians of St Martin in the Fields.
we come now to our time of penitence. God's whole creation groans. The land produces thorns and thistles and longs to be set free. Our sin affects all around us. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. You delight in creation, its colour and diversity. Yet we have misused the earth and plundered its resources for our own selfish ends. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have brought order out of chaos, light out of darkness, good out of evil. But we have preferred darkness in words and deeds which dishonour God's holy name. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You have showered us with blessings, but we have been grudging towards others and lacking in generosity in word and deed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect prayer for this 17th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to that heavenly city where we will see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jackie is going to read for us from Matthew's Gospel. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 33. The parable of the wicked tenants. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do with those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realised that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a tough parable this week uh, in which the chief priests and the elders of the people, the Jewish leaders, must recognise a few home truths. They realise the parable is about them. They are the tenants in the vineyard. 
The vineyard symbolises Israel as is a motif from the Old Testament and the owner of course is God. Yet instead of tending the vineyard, they've put it to their own use, destroying those who have tried to come in and collect the produce and eventually driving the heir out and putting him to death, just as they intend to drive Jesus out of Jerusalem and crucify him. Recognising themselves as being taught about or condemned doesn't lead them to repentance and forgiveness, as we might expect, or even to denial. That's not us, they cry, but no, they don't do anything except plan to arrest Jesus because presumably destroying him is better than listening to him. Yet, of course, others do hear. We hear how they are fearful of the crowd because they regarded Jesus as a prophet, one who was pointing them towards God. Some have heard, have listened to Jesus and want to repent, want to turn the other way and follow him, come to new life in him. But that isn't where the elders and the Pharisees are at the moment. They are intent on their journey towards destroying Jesus. But we are offered that same choice, that life in all its fullness. We are also tenants in God's vineyard. We are given the choice of living his way and having that fullness of life or risking choosing our own way and the subsequent consequences. And that's an invitation to us today to repent of our sins, to turn again to Christ to be welcomed into his kingdom. During the last month, we have been using liturgy from the season of creation tide, both in our online services and in church. And we've also been celebrating Harvest Festival. And it's good to have a focus in our church year on our stewardship of creation and the joy that the natural world brings to us. And it's very easy to celebrate and be joyful when we live in such a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, Yesterday I found myself with half an hour to spare between two meetings and I ended up at the seaside and uh, it was rough, it was really windy and stormy and just the force and power of the sea pounding against the cliffs, just quite awe-inspiring. And yet today as I look out of my window, uh, the sun is shining again, it's chilly, yes, but there's beauty, Uh, the leaves are a riot of colour, it's easy to give thanks. But there is an urgency for us to make sure that we are not just giving thanks for the beauty we see around us, but working out ways of how how we can preserve and continue the stewardship of our creation for generations to come. And we could interpret this parable a little for us, because if the vineyard instead of being Israel is in fact the whole of creation, the planet Earth, and God has given us that gift so that we are tenants on his planet and we have the ability to steward and tend that planet uh, to his glory and to his use. The trouble is we kind of confuse uh, our idea of being a tenant with being an owner and for too many years, for hundreds of years in fact, uh, humanity has regarded the earth as a resource for us, as something that belongs to us something that can be consumed and used to our glory and not to the glory of God. What might God be saying to us as he returns to his vineyard, to his creation and sees what we have done with it? Have we listened to the prophetic voices who have spoken out uh, against the destruction of the planet or have we chosen instead to ignore them or to drive them out? Is it time for us to take stock and to repent and to change our ways? There's a huge urgency, I think, for that to happen. Jesus came to bring life in all its fullness and to teach us how to live God's way in his kingdom. And living God's way requires us to love God and to love our neighbours as ourselves. To live God's way means we're called to put other people's needs first to feed the hungry, to bring water to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to tend for God's people and his creation. And we might be quite happy with how we're doing that personally, how we do that in our day-to-day lives. 
many of us have a real vocation to live that way in the way we live in the everyday. But the trouble is, we're not just individuals, we're part of the whole of humanity. And I fear that there are too many governments and businesses and corporations and individuals with wealth and power who aren't choosing that way of living and instead are continually driven by greed and money, power, wealth, consumption. And the vineyard is being ruined. And it's being ruined at a very quick and distressing pace. The parable reminds us that Jesus is the cornerstone, the one on whom the kingdom is built, but also the one who is the crowning glory of that kingdom. But when we ignore his guidance on living, then of course what happens is we get things the wrong way round. We put other things in pride of place. And together as humanity, we find it very difficult to work together in unity for anything that is good. We are instead focused on our own ends. So perhaps we risk that same condemnation as God returns to his creation that the scribes and the Pharisees were getting when Jesus proclaimed that parable the first time. What kind of condemnation might we expect from God when we as the whole of humanity have failed to look after his creation that he has gifted to us. We do what we can personally, and it's hard in some ways to explore these themes uh, and not get kind of aggrieved personally, because what we do personally does matter. But it's bigger than just us. And so something about how we live collectively is important not just our words and our actions in our own lives, but what we proclaim to the world as Christians, uh, what we proclaim to our communities, how we uh, write to our MPs, how we campaign for justice, how we refuse to ignore inequality, how we speak up for the poor, prioritise the poor. That's a whole bigger thing than just putting out our recycling and having our um, solar panels and choosing an electric car next time we buy one. There's something even bigger than our own personal choices at stake here because we are the community of God in his creation. And we have a calling, I think, to speak with that prophetic voice into the challenges of our time. To repent and follow Jesus brings us new life in him, but to repent and follow Jesus also impacts the world around us, the people, the communities and the creation that we look after. And if we do that, if we recognise the impact our personal choices has on the world, then perhaps we can affect some of the change that is so desperately needed. So let us pray. Pray that we can recognise the things we need to change, but also that we're able to campaign for others to hear that message too. Let us pray. Give us wisdom, good and gracious God, to follow Jesus, your son, to live as people who care and serve in the vineyard that we have been entrusted, to be concerned and to speak out about unjust structures and inequality, and to steward wisely all that you have entrusted us so that we may follow your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We come now to our time of intercession and Jill Perrett is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. At the end of this special Creation Tide month, we offer you thanks and praise for the many blessings of your love. 
with the gifts of your creation, which provides nourishment for our bodies and food for our souls, we praise you. For the gifts of community through which we support one another, we praise you. For the gifts of faith in which we are nurtured and which guide our daily living, we praise you. As we seek to address the huge problem of climate change, we confess our complicity in all that our common home has lost. The biodiversity lost through disappearing habitats due to deforestation and agribusiness. For precious resources lost through our single-use throwaway culture. For rising carbon emissions caused by our continuing use of and reliance on fossil fuels. Forgive us when we are unwilling to change the way we live so that we are failing to be good stewards of the wonderful creation you have entrusted us with. Re-energize us with the pers perseverance and determination that we need for the task. Amen. We bring our country before you now in this time of uncertainty with COVID, unemployment and Brexit. We pray for our government and scientific and health advisors that they may be guided to make wise decisions. We bring our world before you and pray for those who are in a worse situation than us, who are facing the crisis of COVID with scarce medical help and provisions. For those who are starving and struggling to survive because of climate change, Forgive us for our greed in contributing to their problems. Amen. We think now of our village churches and all who will work hard to keep us safe as we worship. We give thanks for our clergy, David, Joe and Fiona. Give them the energy and wisdom they need as they continue to serve us. May David and Jane be refreshed on their holiday and in the complete break from work. Give Joe and Fiona the inspiration and extra energy as they continue with the pastoral care and services here in our team. Amen. Everlasting God, we come before you with our worries, our anxieties and fears. Some of us are tired, some of us are in pain, some are sad, and some are angry. And so, as we place our burdens before you, help us to learn from you and to trust in you, so that in serving you we may find the rest that you have promised. Amen. Gracious God, May your compassion be sensed and felt by the sick and the lonely, the poor and the oppressed as we support them in our prayers and by our assistance whenever we can be close to them. In a few moments of silence, we name those we know of in our hearts. We pray for those who have recently died, that they may be brought rejoicing into the kingdom of heaven, reunited with all their loved ones who have gone before them. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress, and sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a good week. Stay safe and join us again next week to celebrate Harvest Festival. Thanks very much. Bye bye.